What's up, China? This is Jim. I'm Matt. And we live in Yushi, Yunnan Province, China. And we thought we'd talk about it. <laughs> so, just wanted to thank everyone for uh, listening last week. We got a lot of views. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Hope you were、uh, found that informative. And also, we just like to say、uh, thanks for the thumbs up. And of course, we always encourage comments, questions, suggestions, anything in particular about living here in China you'd like to hear about. Just let us know, and we'll、uh, definitely talk about it. Yeah,、um, especially if they subscribe. You know, we try to get together on a Tuesday and put these things out.、Um, yeah, if you know people want to hear them, if they subscribe, then they'll get a notification. Yeah. Yeah. Yep.、Um, so last week we kind of sat down and had a chat about completing the sentence: "You shouldn't come to China if."、Um, I think we had a good chat about that. Yeah,、and、I thought it was real good. We came up with the conclusion that you shouldn't come to China if you're going to compare China to the West in terms of kind of whatever it is that you're doing here.、Mm -hmm. um, this week we're doing exactly that and comparing China to the West. Yes, exactly. <laughs>、um, we're, we're speaking about you know a working week back home versus a working week here. Um, so start us to start us off, Jim. Do you want to tell us a little bit about a normal working week? In the states. Okay, so、uh, so I yeah worked in corporate America in an insurance company, and typically I'd get up about six thirty in the morning, work out, get ready for work,、uh, start working about eight, usually finish between six and seven at night.、Mm -hmm. um, that would be Monday through Friday, and then、um, so you're working between fifteen sixty hours a week. That's a lot. That's、yep. a lot. Um, the forty-hour week thing's kind of gone out the window, isn't it? It really kind of has,、um, especially like when you're on a like a salary,、mm -hmm. yeah. like a salary job.、Mm -hmm. Then there's always、uh, that kind of that corporate mentality to kind of push the employees to do more. Yeah,、um, do a lot of people who work there have that mentality to just do as much as they can for the company? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what.、Um, uh, In my observation, anyway, what the most successful people they,、uh, yeah, they really put like company first,、mm -hmm. most of, ahead of their life. A lot of times, you see that a lot. It's similar in the UK.、Um, I, I moved to China when I was twenty three, twenty four, something like that. So I don't have as much experience as you when it comes to kind of working in,、uh, in, in a corporate job, you know, for an extended period of time. But from the work I did do, it was. Kind of similar, you know. People have made to work quite long hours,、mm -hmm. um, and your pay is obviously dependent on what you're doing, how long you're doing it for, and all things like that.、Um, but when I was working there, I worked for a bank,、mm -hmm. and、um, yeah, one thing that really kind of a lot of people miss, and one of the things that is good about living in China is the commute. Like the commute took an、oh, hour、yeah. for me to get to work in rush hour traffic.、Um, But yeah, I think it's like eight to five or something.、Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's definitely full time. You know, by the time you get home, then with the, the hour commute、yeah. on the way back, yeah, you know, you're not getting home until about seven. You leave about seven. You get back about seven if you're lucky.、Um, so that's like twelve hours a day, five days a week. Yeah,、um, it's a huge、same. majority of your waking life. Oh yeah, I can't remember. I saw a statistic before, and it like had everything like how long you spend waiting in traffic jams and all things、yeah. like that. And it's like how long you spend in work, and it's a huge percentage of your life. Yeah, it、um, really is. So tell us about you know China then, working hours wise. Well, I think that、uh, the working hours here as an English teacher are absolutely fantastic,、mm -hmm. um, uh, especially here we're in what West China here. Yeah, southwest, southwest China. So, life as an English teacher, the working hours are actually really good.、Uh, mm -hmm. The teaching hours are well. I guess it depends where you work. It does.、Um, yeah. But you're really not going to be teaching any more than twenty or twenty-five hours per week, and that's teaching hours. Yeah.、Um, I've never heard of anyone working more than that. Not not for in-class hours.、Yeah. Um, there are office hours some places. Yeah.、Um, And yeah, I'd say you know for for teachers, it's not it's not a, a high pressure environment. No, not at all. And you don't feel as if you're spending all your time at work. Yeah, not at all.、Um, but I think that does change. Obviously, we spoke before about how we're in a bit of a a unique situation, being where we are in China. Yeah. You know, if if you are in a big city, then there there is a lot more pressure. You know,、yeah. um, if you look at it, just kind of. As from the point of view, as kind of it being a business, you know, the、uh -huh. competition 
just in bigger cities. You know, sure. You have to work harder. There's much more competition. Um, you, you know, you have to be different. You have to work harder. But for us, yeah, I'd say that there's not too much pressure. Um, yeah, I would agree. The, <clears throat> the stress level, pressure level, very low. And especially if you like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that makes a huge difference, like job low. Um, but yeah, hours-wise, I mean, you spend a few hours planning your lessons and then mm -hmm. um, the rest of the hours uh, teaching them. But yeah, to work here in uh, southwestern China, um, yeah, you're not going to be working more than 25, 30 hours a week not in really. total. Yeah, yeah, not really. It is different in uh, bigger cities and especially yeah. in the east of China. But yeah, we're a little bit special here. Um, I was going to ask, I don't think... Oh, I think we should think about, you know, we're comparing working, a working week in China to a working week in the West. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at it from kind of the point of view of the locals, oh, because uh -huh. they have a different working life to us. Yeah, they really do. Um, you know, locals, even you know, where we work, they tend to work longer hours than most of the teachers. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of similar across China. Mm -hmm. you, you know, sometimes you do get preferential treatment in terms of you know the hours you work or how much you are made to do in comparison to the local people oh, do you think so yeah it seems like um a few of my friends they have uh, they have different jobs and professions and yeah they're they're much more aligned with a regular 40 hour work week or more if if not more yeah, yeah i know um the friends i have yeah they're always busy they're always working and i know it's a bit of a chinese thing to say oh how are you are oh, very very busy <laughs> But, you know, they do work a lot. I yeah. know, for, for me, Ting, she works a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, and quite often what they do that is different is, we spoke about before, kind of um, how they just kind of put things upon you without any forewarning. Oh, yeah. Um, so a lot of the time, and I know for a lot of kind of public school, ch local Chinese teachers, civil servants and things like that, uh -huh. they just kind of get told that there's a meeting at five o'clock. Um, you know, at four o'clock or something. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, work finishes at five five o'clock. But all of those kind of things yeah. do add up. Um, do you think locals who work here, whether they're kind of you know just starting their career or in the middle of it or whatever, um, have roughly the same pressure as locals in the West? Um, well, in one way, because of the culture and kind of the. The expected life path is to graduate college, get a good job, save a lot of money, um, get married, buy a house, a car, mm -hmm. and have a child. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of financial pressure within uh, yeah. the first five years of getting out of college. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because by 26, 27, um, traditionally, uh, that should happen. So that's a lot of pressure your first five years. Mm -hmm. So Or well, social pressure, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, all social pressure. Um, yeah. Does that come from elders as well? You know, your parents, your grandparents, or is it just kind of, is it sometimes pressure that you put on yourself? Well, in the in the West, it would be more self pressure. Although right. I'm sure there is still, you know, when the daughter turns thirty and she's not married, her mom's the, giving the word. her yeah, giving her hints and stuff. <laughs> but here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the pressure is put on by traditional family values, your grandparents, mm -hmm. your parents, um, and a lot of times the people buy into it. And so oh, they, completely. And when, once they buy into it, they st start self-pressuring. Yeah. I mean, the pressure yeah. comes from themselves as yeah. well. I'm seeing it at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with Ting, you know, uh, like a few of her mates have got houses and we're, uh, we're getting married in January. And yeah, there, there is pressure. And she puts a lot of that on herself. Yeah. But... I think with the difference here with the Chinese parents is if they want to put pressure on you, they're not hinting. You know, you know it's quite well known that around spring festival time, um, a lot of single uh, ladies, gentlemen, when they go into their hometowns for a big family reunion, mm -hmm. uh, they get really worried because they know that their grandparents, their aunts, and everyone's going to ask them if they're, um, you know, if they've got girlfriend, boyfriend, when they get married, when they're having yeah. kids. And I saw a funny diagram. It was like um, going home for spring festival. Uh, first question is, do you have a boyfriend? Yes or no? You choose no. They start questioning why. You choose yes. The next question from the no is the aunt is, when are you getting married? <laughs> if you give a date, uh, she's like, okay, when are you having kids? If you yeah. don't give a date, it's like, well, why haven't you booked a date? Yeah. If, uh, if you booked a date and you've told them, when are you having kids? You know, it's just kind of relentless pressure. Yeah. Um, 
here that is definitely a bit more or more kind of in your face than the West. Yeah, yeah definitely. In the West, <clears throat> um, it seems like your first few years after college, um, a lot of, well, it's kind of changed from my generation to the mm. current graduating generation because my generation, everyone wanted to get out of the house at yep. 18 yes. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But now it seems like a lot of people are going back to live with their families. Yeah, some, I find it a bit strange. I know after kind of going to university and just living abroad, even in the you know short time I was at home after graduating, it's difficult to kind of live with you know uh, your family again. Yeah. Um, when you're used to living on your own or with your mates. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I only did it for a short time. And I know when I do go back home. Um, still, you know, after the first week or whatever, it kind of like, it, it gets it gets to you a little bit. I don't yeah. think I could move back home. I get a few saving for a house, but it's got to be tricky. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I can't, at that <laughs> age, I can't imagine it. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, just to not live on your own and have your own kind of private space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think, so do you think the people here, equivalent pressure to the guys in the States? Or the UK? Well, I think actually in the West there's a little bit less pressure socially. Right, right. Okay. Um, from the family, oh, I'm sure you're going to get a little bit, but it'll be real subtle. It won't be direct. Mm, yeah. Um, and uh, so I think there's in the West it's a lot less pressure um, mm -hmm. initially that first five years out of college because mm -hmm. everyone understands you're just getting started. You're, yeah, yeah. You're just kind of putting things together. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, I think there's a lot less pressure. Um, yeah, it might be. I'm not sure, but I know there's definitely a lot of pressure here. Yeah, and you sure. know better than me in terms of the pressure that guys in the West put on them because that's what you did for such a long time. Um, so let's speak about obviously the reason we work is to get money. Let's oh, speak yeah. about salary because um, um, it's part of working. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? 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 How would you compare the salary here to the salary in the West? Well. Um well, like if you take my starting wage when I started my career and my finishing wage, yeah. there was vast difference. So <coughs> I'll just kind of go with the median. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> kind of like at the 10-year ten, ten mark. Right, right, right. Um, I would actually say for lifestyle, hours worked and value received from that, China's much higher. Yeah. Much higher. Okay. Um, because, um, like, I can take a couple of vacations a year now, mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. plenty of money, can live on like half my salary, yeah. comfortably. Uh, and in the West, oh, that was you couldn't live on half your salary. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Even even at the height of what I was making at the end of my career, I yeah. still couldn't live on half that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I think here, yeah, this just value received in the way you. The way you live your life, um, the extra free time that you have, um, and how far your money goes. That's a big thing. I mean, your money, I mean, things are just a lot cheaper here. Yeah. A lot cheaper. And so... I mean, the salaries do reflect that. Um, the it, things being cheaper. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, I think I agree. You do kind of... Your money goes further. I think you do kind of get a better quality of life out of it. Yeah. Think. Yeah, yeah. For um, sure. One of the things I was going to say then, uh, you said your yeah, salary definitely, or you wouldn't be able to live on 50% of your salary back home. And is that just because things are generally more expensive or because, you know, back home you've got all of these comforts. Basically, you, you know, there are so many things like the, you know, the Google personal assistant. Is it Alexa? Um, I'm not sure. Called, but yeah, um, things like Netflix, you know, uh, cable TV, Sky TV, all of these things just add up. Or is it just because you know things like you know going shopping, doing your weekly shops, just cheaper? Um, well, in the states, everything is more expensive. Your phone bill is more expensive. Your electricity bill, your water bill, your taxes, mm -hmm. um, uh, and you you have to have a car. You really can't rely on public transportation yeah. unless you're in a really big city. Um, and if the public transportation that is there is usually like busing, and it's okay, not great. Right. No trains. Um, no, not not trains like subways or okay. like trams. I mean, right, Detroit okay. has a couple of trams, and I'm sure some of the big cities have like metro train lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not proper trains. Okay, okay. Um, 
But uh, yeah, everything is just more expensive. Plus there's mandatory insurance. Mm -hmm. You've got house insurance, car insurance, health insurance, all mandatory. So um, then, if, then when you toss in the fun things, cable, yeah. cool new smartphone with mm -hmm. unlimited data, stuff like that, well, that stuff's not all that expensive, but it's all the necessities that are really expensive. Mm -hmm. And they just add up, yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, it, I think it's starting to become like that here. So you know when I first came to China, mm -hmm. He's paying for kind of a TV box subscription or something like that was unheard of. Any movie you wanted was um, just free and readily available on Chinese websites. Oh, no. um, and yet the copyright, copyright laws are still not <laughs> really <laughs> existent. But they've kind of cut down on the amount of basically Western TV shows and movies you can watch. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I think it kind of is slowly becoming like the West in a sense more influenced by the West yeah you know my TV box at home um, it's not as expensive I think it's like 30 RMB a month okay which is it's, it's not much um, but again it's one of those things that does add up um, the internet you know every month uh, they do add up and I'm not sure if China is kind of becoming a little bit more Western in that sense as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. As people have more spendable income, they're going to demand more services. Yeah. That's um, it. And they're going to they're going to demand more, and then they'll spend it. But so your cable box, you said, was about thirty quid. About thirty. Yeah. Okay. So that uh, equivalizes to about five U.S. dollars. Right. Yeah. The basic package, just basic, no sports, no premium like HBO, Showtime, anything mm -hmm. like that, was about seventy dollars. Yeah. And that's then if you get cheap. like. Um, if you get a bundle package, mm -hmm. um, including like data and internet and everything, you're going to be paying like 120, 140 a month. Not cheap. No. And, they had no. and it's just one example, but but everything is like that. Yeah. Now, do you think we're in a bit of a unique situation because we're foreigners here, because we're guests here, and you know, we're not completely immersed within Chinese culture yet? You know, we don't get the pressures of social kind of of. Um, we don't get social pressure basically um, and we're not kind of surrounded by you know locals all the time um, do you think we kind of avoid that whereas for the locals they would be doing things like you know the insurance every month you know um, TV do mm. this there's something comparable to the West um, <clears throat> well yeah I think definitely as you know, the informed guests the social expectations that yeah. are put on, on everyone we're kind of exempt from yeah yeah um, like uh, birthdays, Hong Bao, stuff like that. I mean, we still do yeah. it with our friends, but here with the uh, kind of the circles of Guanxi, you give a lot of Hong Bao. You do Hong um, Bao, just red packets with money in basically. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, when when you go out to dinner with someone, well, then you have to return that favor. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And um, there's just a lot of social expectations that we're just free from. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of nice. In a way. It, it's really nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can see it changing. You really mm -hmm. can see it changing. Um, so I know when I was back in the West, uh, days off, oh, uh -huh. uh, you know, weekends were kind of spent usually kind of getting stuff done, yeah, um, or playing sports. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in uni, kind of what, doing essays or just kind of moping about usually. Mm -hmm. um, what about weekends? Time off here in comparison to the West? How did you used to spend your weekends? Um, back in the U.S., I'd usually spend about three quarters of one of the weekends yep. days doing uh, house maintenance, shopping, cleaning, mm -hmm. laundry, stuff like that. Yep. And so that's about three quarters of one of those days off. Um, especially if you own a house, there's just a lot of maintenance, whether you're mowing the grass or if it's mm -hmm. winter, you're shoveling the drive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of home maintenance. Um, and you have usually have a yard, yep. a yard of some, some kind, unless you live in a, an apartment complex. But... Um, and so, yeah, that actually, all those hours add up. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that similar here, though? I know for me, on my, on Mondays usually, it's like, right, wake up, do, do walk the dogs, always go to Walmart, mm -hmm. um, always, or, or the market, to just kind of do a weekly shop, get the fruit and veg and you know, the meat, whatever, in for the week. Um, usually wash the car then. Uh -huh. um, but then it's kind of like, that's like a fifth of my weekend, if that. Okay. Um, although this weekend's been a bit different. Um, but usually it's about a fifth of the weekend. Then the rest, you know, is taken up by hanging out with friends or doing whatever. Um, I think the weekends here, I wouldn't, I don't know if better is the right, right word, but I'd say that we, 
make the most of them. Here. Yeah, yeah, for in sure. In the West, I think you take them for granted. Yeah, so it's like they go by so quickly. Yeah? yeah, they really do. And and because we don't have a lot of these, uh, I mean, sure, we've still got to go shopping and do the necessities. Yeah, I mean, you still have to clean, do your laundry, stuff like that. Yeah. But a lot of house maintenance. Um, uh, those free up. That frees up hours per week yeah, it does. that you get back into, yeah, hanging out with friends, doing your hobbies, um, whatever you're into. Mm. And so that adds to a better lifestyle. I think so. Um, same question that I asked just now. Do you think that because we're guests here, I mean, most people who come to live um, or go to live in a different country are generally quite open-minded and usually a little bit adventurous. Yeah. Do you think that it's the certain type of person that comes to China that ensures that they make the most of their weekend and they don't take it for granted because maybe they know their time here is limited? Um, yeah, I would say the more adventurous um, one is, yeah, the more they see their uh, time, their limited time as, I need to do something, you know, take every opportunity, don't yeah. let anything go to waste because yeah. I'm here for a year. Uh -huh. um, and maybe one of those personality types that we talked about last week would would, would not necessarily see that. Yeah. And they would just kind of take that for granted as well. They might be. Do less. Um, but yeah, the weekends are usually pretty full here. Yeah. Um, but full of things that you want them to be full of. Yeah. Um, instead of, like like I said, you know, taking care of the lawn or fixing whatever, they're usually filled with things that you've arranged. Yeah. Um, so the weekends here are usually pretty good. Yeah. yeah? What, what kind of things would you usually go to? Uh, here or back in the States? Uh, back in the States. Um, uh, visit friends, family, mm -hmm. uh, played a lot of disc golf, mm -hmm. um, and spent about three quarters of one day doing the necessities. Um, and just kind of resting as well a little bit because, yeah. uh, I mean, I worked a lot of hours and by the end of the week I was pretty tired. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but yeah, it was always, but here, the free time, because there's a lot more of it, um, you're a lot more relaxed, you're, and China's a really social culture. Yeah, so, um, so, especially if you have a circle of friends, there you usually have an invitation of some kind to do something socially. Well, we spoke before, didn't we, about how you end up kind of canceling the and then, cause, yeah, because <laughs> you just don't have time, and you just want some time to yourself. So... So but that's like that's such a better lifestyle balance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than working uh, so many more hours, being so exhausted. That, yeah. Um, so and it ties into what um, we spoke about earlier with the salary. Um, that essentially you have a bit more disposable income. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and you know that does allow you to make the most of your weekends a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to go away for a long weekend, you, you usually can just do it. Yeah. Um, without worrying too much. Yeah. Um, if you manage your money well, you'll be surprised yeah. how far it can go. Oh, I really can. I mean, you know, you rarely spend more than about twenty RMB on a meal. Uh, yeah, unless it's like a, unless it's a big grand. Yeah, thing, but yeah, but yeah, twenty, twenty-five. I mean, yeah, for twenty or twenty-five kwai, which is let's equivalent that to U.S. dollars, would be about between four and. Uh, about four dollars, four dollars fifty, something like that. Right. Okay. So about it, three pound, just under three pound. So to get the kind of lunch um, for twenty to twenty-five kai, and it's going to be a big lunch. Mm -hmm. um, that would be twelve or fifteen dollars back in the states. Yeah. 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 It's going to be the same in the UK. Um, about eight, nine pound. Yeah. Um, so your money definitely does go further here. Um, so what do you think? The things we spoke about so far, so far, the salary. Mm -hmm. China wins? Uh, oh, definitely. Work hours? China. Social life? China. Or weekends? I would China. Yeah, and money going further as well. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's no wonder why we just say that we love the lifestyle here. Yeah, yeah. So with, uh, let me ask you, with kind of having worked both in, the China, in China and States, um, what things do you Re like specifically like about being here that you don't like about back home and vice versa um, what things do you miss about working back home if anything of course um, I would say just my friends that I used to work with right 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 that's what I miss and of course obviously I miss my family and everything but um, yeah from a work perspective uh, I used to meet a lot of people and um, 
that had a lot of social interaction that way. But yeah, the people that I worked with thought I miss. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. As far as the job goes, yeah, it was a fun and interesting job, but um, it was, you know, typical uh, high stress environment. Yeah. So I don't miss that at all. The thing I love about working here is one, I love my job. I love teaching students, um, love seeing them progress over time. Mm -hmm. um, and the pressures uh, here are not the same as corporate America pressures. One, there hardly, there's hardly any pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the biggest pressure is just to do quality work. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really not a pressure because if you're a professional, you would do that anyway. Yeah. So that, and that being really the only pressure, it seems like there's so much less pressure mm -hmm. than compared to back in the West in that sense. That's true. The one thing I was gonna say that I think I do miss from working back home, or if we compare in a working week, one thing that the yeah. West does have over China is kind of just the small benefits you get from working at this particular place. Um, okay. Yeah, whether it's kind of you know private healthcare or you know some places you know free movie tickets, mm -hmm. um, little perks, just the small perks. Yeah. yeah, you know, when it's all about kind of keeping morale high, whether it does or doesn't, is mm -hmm. kind of another discussion for another day. But you know those small things that you know you go to buy something in a, an electronic store and you get 30% off because you work at this place. Just oh, yeah. small things like that. Yeah. And I don't think China's kind of caught on with that yet. Yeah, the fringe benefits, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, they don't have a, it seems like, just from talking to my friends, yeah, there's not, there's no fringe. No, I mean, no, no, no. they'll get health insurance. Um, if they, they're lucky. Yep, if they have a, yeah, a decent job. Yeah. Um, and then they'll be able to participate in the retirement insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, basic life necessities. Yeah, I know the retirement um, or the pensions, especially for kind of people who work as civil servants or do anything related to the government, That's great. they pretty much get their full salary That's when great. they retire at like 55, 56. Yeah. Which is crazy, yeah? Yeah. Back in the States, I think it's 67 or, or I'm not really sure, I'm a little out of touch with that, but I, I think it's about 67. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think... Speaking about the kind of those fringe benefits, I think China, in terms of kind of you know the boss, mm -hmm. it's very old-fashioned the way kind of the boss would look oh, at yeah. you know their company, their organization, their business, where it's like well they get a salary, and you know they work, they get a salary, and that's not really the view of people in the West anymore. Is it? People mm -hmm. in the West, if you go yeah, well, uh, we can offer you these benefits. You work, you get your salary. That's it people wouldn't think about applying for the job. Yeah, um, no. But I think that's something that China, or like kind of a lot of the leaders here see, you know, what well, they work, they get paid. Why should they get something else? I think that is one thing that the West wins with for me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've got a number of, I mean, I've got an iPad mini as a perk from my, yeah, from my yeah, West yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. So, in all kinds of things over the years, uh, uh, too many to even count. And so, yeah, those, those fringe benefits are nice. Um, yeah, they're like, uh, yeah, I would say if I, I think I would still miss my friends more, mm. but yeah, yeah, but yeah <laughs> the fringe benefits are nice. Although uh, in our particular circumstance, we do get some pretty nice fringe benefits and perks, but that's very specific because of the situation we're in. Yeah, um, and one thing, uh, often the owner or the boss mm -hmm. will often give around spring festival, um, yeah. Hongba, like we said earlier. Yeah, like basically a little gift for Chinese New Year, Chinese, one of the traditions is to give these red packets. Uh, the boss or the owner of the business will pretty much always um, kind of dish those out to the employees. Yeah, yeah. it's usually quite a nice bonus. Yeah, it really is. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the things. It's probably the only thing I'd say that the West wins with. Um, Fringe benefits, yeah. So we've got kind of salary, work hours, uh, free time, everything like that has gone to China, yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. Everything's going to China so far. Um, one thing that I'd say, oh, the wind chimes are going again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that the West, and it's not a work week specific thing, but things you do, hobbies, there's more variety in the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, for, yeah, that's um, for sure. I'd say that most things that you do in the West, most things you can do here, and if you can yeah. do them where we are in Yushi, mm -hmm. then you can do them in pretty much any city in China, uh, yeah, because we're a small we're, city. Yeah, we're a small city. Um, but yeah, what, what kind of things would you get up to in terms of activities here? Um, well, um, 
you know, Yushi's uh, in a valley, so we're surrounded by mountains, and I like to go hiking. Yeah. And um, like to just explore um, kind of off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. Like to sometimes just take a taxi to an area that I haven't been before and then mm -hmm. just walk around and explore it. Got some amazing pictures. Oh, yeah. Some amazing pictures. And here in Yushi, you know, I mean, we've got some a great observation deck that mm -hmm. overlooks the whole city. We've got coffee shops. We've got an old town area. Um, Cinema. The cinema, yeah, we've got three D IMAX, um, tennis courts, badminton courts, tennis, badminton, basketball, any bad sports really. Yeah, um, except disc golf. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not holding that against Yushi. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've got some. There's horseback riding. Yeah, in. yeah. Um, Paintballing, paint adventure ball in. park. Like yeah, a, yeah. There's a lot of things to do. There really is, and because the culture is so social around like eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. um, Spend a lot of social time, yeah, having meals together. Yeah, eating and drinking together, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> one of the things, that's one thing that I didn't think to speak about or put right down. The one thing that China definitely wins at, and it's not a working thing, but kind of meals and social events. Yeah. Um, every meal you go to, there'll always be kind of, you always meet new people, mm -hmm. interesting people, there'll always be really good food, and you'll always have, or, like a, some baijiu, some yeah. of the local spirit, um, and you'll always be greeted by kind of smiling faces. Yeah, um, super people welcoming. There. And yeah, it's like if your friends or with, or if the person who's invited you there, um, he's friends with the guy next to him, and he kind of knows the guys at the table. Then they're automatically your friends. Yeah, and you always get kind of, you just always have a good time. You usually get a bit drunk. Um, <laughs> and, <A little> bit. <laughs> and it's just a really good time whereas I know meals back home in the west if you think of kind of a birthday meal mm -hmm. yeah you usually have a lot of fun yeah. um, but I think in China it's just kind of a little bit warm and a little bit more welcoming I, yeah, I would say for definitely more welcoming um, and it's it's more of a it's more of an event yeah, 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 than, yeah. than a typical uh, like family dinner back home. Mm -hmm. Family dinner, you spend all this time preparing it, you sit down, you maybe eat for 30 minutes, yeah, maybe yeah. 45 if it's long. Mm -hmm. Here, two hours, two and a half hours. So not the way Chinese food is. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, with not, chopsticks, you're always picking. Yeah, um, and it's not uncommon just to have a, a nice long dinner. Yeah, with a little bit of baijiu and everyone's relaxed, happy. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you go there at five o'clock, you don't leave the restaurant till. 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. And by that point, you know, you're usually pretty <laughs> wrecked. Um, but yeah, dinners here are a lot of fun. And yeah, they sure are. They often lead to like bar, going to a bar or KTV or something like that. Yeah. Like you kind of have a, make a big night of it. A lot of the times you go for a dinner. Yeah. And then you then you get other invitations at that dinner with your new friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Which then... leads to cancelling more plans the next day. Um, but yeah, I think China would win on that. Um, anything else that you have? Um, just to just to kind of a quick synopsis or wrap it all up yeah. would be the overall lifestyle, the work life balance mm -hmm. um, is really fantastic. It's a low stress lifestyle. Yeah, and um, it's a lifestyle where you can make good money. Good money if you do good work, obviously. Yeah, you know, if you come here and it's just a joke, then you're not going to last long. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. work-life balance is so important. Yeah for, yeah, for a really balanced, happy life, yeah. it really is. And here, it's um, yeah, the balance is really nice. But again, uh, it's different for the locals. It, it is, yeah. But yeah. for us, um, yeah, it's absolutely a great lifestyle. I wonder if it would be the same for Chinese people going to work in the West. I don't think so. No, I think the Western standards would apply to them. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. whereas we get a bit special ahead, don't yeah. we? Yeah, and we do get we do get special treatment. Um, which is quite nice. It's really nice. I can't say that uh, <laughs> that I don't like it because I do like it. <laughs> me too, me too. It's, it's one of those things that I think you'd miss if you went back home, getting that preferential treatment. Yeah, it sure will be. Because, yeah, I mean, to go from yeah being uh, kind of that super superstar mini syndrome yeah. to a wallflower again, yeah, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be an adjustment. Yeah. Um, so I think we've kind of summed it up then in our opinions uh, a week working in the West versus a week working in China. You pick China. Yeah, uh, every time. I yeah. think I'd, I'd agree as well. Yeah. Um, it, it's a nice place to work. Obviously, we said it before, it's why we've been here for nearly 10 years combined, yeah? Yeah, and well, you've known a lot of teachers in the past, mm -hmm. and would they, do you think, for the most part, they would agree? 
without question yeah, yeah. Um, I've also seen a lot of people leave mm. and you know I get a message on Facebook or an email um, saying how much they miss it yeah. and how you know it's they wish they'd have kind of stayed or done things a little bit differently yeah you know just hindsight yeah um, just kind of you know wishing you'd uh, you know had a little bit more fun or done whatever mm. uh, but yeah I, I think most people who leave do have a positive opinion of it yeah. and a lot of them miss it yeah 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 well yeah there's I can certainly understand that it's a great lifestyle it is so next week we're going to talk about what it's really like to live in a communist country mm-hmm. uh, well and I say communist and I kind of put that in uh, quote brackets uh-huh. we'll yeah I see what you mean um, <clears throat> we'll kind of have a sit down and just speak about how it affects our lives yeah. uh, how politics kind of play a role in our life what the police are like here mm-hmm. um, and yeah maybe kind of relate that back to doing what we shouldn't do and comparing it to the West yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah that'll be next week um, if you've enjoyed the video please leave a like yeah. and subscribe we'll speak to you soon so this is Jim and this is Matt Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.